Welcome, humans, and any celestial body else out there listening. This is Curious Minds Infinite Answers. I'm your host, Courtney Christine Costco. This podcast, simply put, is a mix of human curiosity and how, with the help of AI technology, curious minds can get the answers we seek. Let's get mind bending and plunge deep beneath the surface of our everyday thoughts. Let's begin. This episode is close to my heart. It's a little different than what I intend to accomplish with this podcast series, but special and I believe important nonetheless. To anyone who has ever experienced the bond or friendship of a dog, or to anyone who has had to say farewell to their best friend, this episode is for you. While much of this may be common knowledge, I'd like to set the stage for a more complete narrative. And so, we start here. 15,000 to 40,000 years ago, a time in which dogs were believed to be the first domesticated animals with regards to their relationship to humans. Archaeological evidence, such as burial sites, shows humans and dogs buried together, which reflects that the bond between humans and dogs was already well established these thousands of years ago. This partnership was practical and also deeply emotional. The domestication of dogs likely began when wolves, the ancestors of modern dogs, started scavenging near human campsites. Early humans might have tolerated these wolves because they helped keep predators away and scavenged food waste, creating a mutually beneficial relationship. Over time, the differences between wild wolves and the domesticated versions became more apparent Dogs evolved distinct traits that set them apart from their wolf ancestors, both physically and behaviorally. So where does the word dog come from anyway? Why didn't we just end up calling them tame wolves or something like that? Well, actually, the word dog has a somewhat mysterious origin. It comes from the Old English word dogga, D-O-C-G-A, which was used to describe a specific breed of dog, the mastiff. However, the exact meaning of the dokka is unknown, and no ancient English word is related to it. Kind of an unsatisfying answer. Anyway, as dogs became more integrated into human society, performing different roles like hunting, guarding, and companionship, they began to be seen as a separate species. As dogs became more specialized and common in human communities, a new word like dog would have naturally emerged to differentiate them from their wild counterparts, wolves, replacing the older Germanic word hound, which still survives today to refer to specific breeds like greyhounds or hunting dogs. As the bond between wolves and humans grew stronger, humans selectively bred wolves that were less aggressive and more sociable. Dogs began to adapt to human social cues developing the ability to understand our gestures, emotions, and tone. Their keen sense of loyalty and willingness to cooperate with humans made them invaluable partners. As civilizations grew, so did the role of dogs in human society, which is why they became not only working animals, but also beloved companions. So what is it with dogs? Why are they such an incredibly loyal species? Let's touch on the evolutionary bond. Dogs evolved from wolves, which are social pack animals. In a wolf pack, loyalty and cooperation are key survival strategies. When dogs began to be domesticated, they transferred this pack mentality to humans. Over generations, this pack-like bond evolved, making dogs naturally inclined to be loyal to their human pack leaders. Then, there's selective breeding. Humans have selectively bred dogs over centuries reinforcing traits like obedience, affection, and loyalty. Dogs that showed loyalty to humans were more likely to be fed, cared for, and allowed to reproduce. This reinforced a genetic predisposition for loyalty in domesticated dogs. The emotional connection. Dogs and humans share a unique emotional connection. Research shows that when dogs interact with their owners, through eye contact, touch, or even simply being in the same room, both the dog and the human experience an increase in oxytocin, the love hormone. This chemical reaction strengthens the emotional bond, making dogs feel attached to their humans, similar to the way in which humans feel about their loved ones. Next is dependence and trust. 
Domesticated dogs rely on humans for their basic needs, food, shelter, and safety. In return, they offer companionship and protection. This interdependence creates a strong bond of trust. Over time, dogs have developed an ability to read human emotions and body language, making them highly responsive to our needs, which reinforces their loyalty. And as mentioned, there's the pack mentality. Dogs, like wolves, thrive in social hierarchies. Once a dog sees a human as the leader of their pack, they are naturally inclined to follow, protect, and remain loyal to that leader. This pack loyalty is deeply ingrained in their social behavior. And finally, unconditional love. Dogs have been shown to offer something close to unconditional love. Unlike humans who often attach conditions to relationships, dogs are hardwired to stick with their pack, regardless of circumstances. They don't hold grudges or expect anything in return for their loyalty, which is why they are often seen as one of the most loyal creatures on Earth. Dogs' loyalty is a mix of evolutionary instinct, selective breeding, and the deep emotional connections they form with humans. This combination makes them some of the most loyal companions in the entire animal kingdom. Almost makes you wonder if dogs should be training us instead of us training them. One of the most famous and heartfelt stories of dog loyalty, probably told over a thousand times, is the story of Hachiko, a dog from Japan whose loyalty became legendary. In the early 1920s, Professor Ueno from Tokyo, Japan, had a dog whose name was Hachiko, an Akita breed. Hachiko would walk with Professor Ueno every morning to the Shibuya train station as he left for work. The dog would then return to the station every evening to wait for him to come home. One day, in May 1925, Professor Ueno tragically passed away while at work due to a sudden brain hemorrhage. He never returned to the station where Hachiko had faithfully waited for him. Despite this, Hachiko continued to go to the train station every single day at the exact time his owner used to arrive, waiting for him to come back. Hachiko's loyalty became well known to the people in the area. For nine years, until his own death, Hachiko waited at the Shibuya train station, hoping to see his owner return. Locals brought him food and water, and his story spread throughout Japan, symbolizing unbreakable loyalty and devotion. Hachiko's story became so famous that after his death in 1935, a bronze statue was erected in his honor at the Shibuya station. The statue still stands today, as of October 2024, serving as a symbol of loyalty. People from all over the world come to pay tribute to Hachiko, and the story continues to inspire countless others to appreciate the profound loyalty dogs can offer. Not only are dogs pretty amazing at being some of our closest friends and even more so members of the family, they're also healers. Dogs have been scientifically proven to benefit human health in both physical and emotional ways. Here are some of those ways. Reducing stress and anxiety. Interacting with a dog can lower levels of cortisol, the stress hormone, and increase levels of oxytocin, the love hormone, which helps to alleviate stress and promote relaxation. Petting a dog or even spending time with them can produce these calming effects. Improving heart health. Studies have shown that dog owners tend to have lower blood pressure and cholesterol levels. This is partly due to the physical activity that comes with owning a dog, such as walking or playing, which helps maintain heart health. The American Heart Association has linked dog ownership to a reduced risk in cardiovascular disease. Boosting mental health. Dogs are often used in therapy because they provide companionship and emotional support, which can be especially helpful for people dealing with depression, anxiety, PTSD, or loneliness. Their presence encourages social interaction and reduces feelings of isolation. Therapy in service dogs. Specially trained therapy dogs can help people in hospitals, nursing homes, and rehabilitation centers, offering comfort to patients. Service dogs, particularly for individuals with disabilities, perform tasks such as guiding the blind, alerting people with epilepsy to seizures, 
or providing stability for those with mobility issues. The last point we'll touch on, encouraging physical activity. Dogs need regular exercise, and dog owners are more likely to meet daily exercise recommendations. This routine can improve physical fitness and mental well-being, keeping both the dog and the owner healthier. There are so many instances, both published and personal, that speak to dogs as healers. Here's one story about a dog named Cleo, who ends up saving a soldier's life. John, a U.S. Army veteran, had returned home but was suffering from severe PTSD. After witnessing intense combat and losing friends on the battlefield, John found it difficult to reintegrate into his normal life. He suffered from anxiety, nightmares, and extreme emotional distress. He was withdrawn and felt like he was losing hope. His therapist suggested he get a service dog, and that's when Cleo, a German shepherd trained to assist veterans with PTSD, entered his life. Cleo wasn't just a service dog who followed commands. She became John's lifeline. Cleo had been specially trained to sense emotional distress and interrupt panic attacks. When John started to feel anxious or overwhelmed, Cleo would nudge him, place her head in his lap, or gently lean into him, bringing him back to the present moment and calming his nervous system. If John showed signs of an oncoming panic attack, Cleo would guide him to a safe space or lie beside him, offering grounding support. One night, John reached an especially low point. His PTSD had been spiraling, and he was overwhelmed with intrusive thoughts. Alone in his house, John considered ending his life. As he sat with his dark thoughts, Cleo came and sat beside him, nudging his arm and resting her head on his leg. Her presence was comforting and grounding in a way John hadn't anticipated. At that moment, something in John shifted. He looked down at Cleo's trusting eyes and realized she wasn't just a dog. She was his companion, and she relied on him just as much as he needed her. Cleo's quiet presence, her loyalty, and her unconditional love pulled him back from the edge. John later said that Cleo saved his life that night simply by being there, by reminding him that he wasn't alone. From that point on, Cleo became more than just a service dog. She was his healer, helping John regain control of his life. With Cleo by his side, John began to face his PTSD head on, eventually finding peace and healing through the love and companionship of his loyal dog. Which leads me into my next part of our topic here today, when we must say farewell. I've read polls asking whether humans would give up years of their life if it meant that their pup's life would be extended. It's not hard to imagine that many people say yes to the hypothetical scenario. I know I would. Shout out to my boy, Mr. Jack Parker, retired, my 17-year-old Schnauzer Mix, who was rescued and in return rescued his owners. The bonds we form with our best friends are strong. It's a heavy burden to carry knowing that one day we inevitably must say goodbye. And while the short lifespan of our dogs can feel incredibly unfair, there are a few positive perspectives on this that I hope can help bring you some comfort. Number one, cherishing the present moment. Dogs live in the moment fully enjoying each day without worrying about the future. Their shorter lifespans remind us to be more present and to appreciate the time we have with them. This outlook can inspire us to live with the same sense of presence and joy, making the most of every day together. Number two, a reminder of unconditional love. Dogs give us everything they have in their time with us, and their shorter lives don't diminish the intensity of the bond we share. In fact, knowing that our time with them is limited can make us value that love even more. Their loyalty and devotion are lifelong gifts, no matter how long or short that life may be. Number three, lessons in life and loss. While it's painful to say goodbye, Dogs teach us important lessons about love, loyalty, and even grief. 
They show us how to love fully, without hesitation, and how to cope with loss when the time comes. In some ways, their shorter lifespan prepares us to handle other difficult experiences with resilience and grace. Number four, a cycle of giving and receiving love. Many people choose to welcome new dogs into their lives after losing a pet. While no dog can replace another, the ability to open your heart to a new dog after loss speaks to the healing power of the bond. Each new dog brings fresh joy, memories, and love, creating a beautiful cycle of connection. Number five, they live a full life no matter how long. Dogs don't count the years like we do, they just live. They're happy with walks, belly rubs, playing, and just being near their favorite humans. Even in a shorter lifespan, they often lead lives filled with love, adventure, and contentment. In many ways, their ability to live life to the fullest, no matter how long or short, is something to admire and strive for. Number six, the honor of being their companion. We get to experience the whole arc of a dog's life, from puppyhood to their golden years, and be there for them every step of the way. This journey, while short to us, is one of the most rewarding relationships we can experience. And finally, number seven, their impact lives on. Although a dog's life is shorter, the love, joy, and memories they leave behind last forever. They leave a permanent mark on our hearts and lives, and their legacy often encourages people to continue loving and caring for other animals. Their influence on us extends far beyond their physical presence. While it will always be tough to accept that dogs don't live longer, the love they give in their time is immeasurable. Focusing on the joy, companionship, and lessons they bring can help bring a positive perspective to their shorter lives. Sometimes grief can be blinding and we just can't see how to get through it. We've had to do it before, and we'll have to do it again. Grieving the loss of a pet is a deeply personal experience, but there are many ways to process and honor that grief. Here are some ways to help navigate the grieving process. Allow yourself to feel. One of the most important things is to give yourself permission to feel the full range of emotions, sadness, anger, emptiness, or even guilt. Pets are family, and their loss can be as profound as losing a human loved one. It's okay to grieve and take the time you need to process the emotions. Honoring your pet in a tangible way can help you process your grief. Some ideas include creating a scrapbook or photo album to celebrate your pet's life, planting a tree or garden in their memory as a living tribute, Hold a small ceremony with friends and family to say goodbye and share memories. Get a custom paw print, artwork, or keepsake, like an engraved necklace or a stone for their resting place. Maybe even a custom blanket where you can have photos photoshopped on and wrap that blanket around you every time you think of them. Talk about it. Sharing stories and talking about your pet with those who understand can be very healing. Whether it's with friends, family, or even support groups, there are online communities specifically for pet loss where people can share their experiences and offer support. Journaling, writing down your thoughts and feelings can be a powerful tool in the grieving process. It allows you to reflect on the happy moments you shared with your pet and to process your emotions. Some people also write letters to their pets expressing gratitude and love as a way to say goodbye. Keep a routine. If you're used to walking your dog at certain times, try to fill that time with a peaceful walk or activity that honors their memory. Create a ritual or farewell. Having a special farewell ritual can help provide closure. It could be something as simple as lighting a candle and sharing your favorite memories or as elaborate as creating a special pet memorial box to keep their collar, toys, or other mementos. Volunteer or donate in their honor. 
Some people find healing by channeling their grief into helping other animals, volunteering at a local shelter, fostering a rescue dog, or making a donation in your pet's name to an animal charity can help you keep their memory alive in a meaningful way. Adopt when you're ready. There's no rush. But for many people, welcoming a new pet into their life can help fill the void left by the loss. No pet can replace another, but a new friend can bring fresh joy and healing. It's important to wait until you feel ready, but when the time comes, adopting can be a beautiful way to honor your previous pet's legacy. Practice self-care. Grief can take a toll on your physical and mental health. Make sure you're taking care of yourself by eating well, staying active, and getting enough sleep, as hard as all those may seem. Engaging in activities that bring you peace, whether it's walking in nature, meditating, or spending time with loved ones. Create a ritual for special days. Anniversaries, holidays, or your pet's birthday can trigger strong emotions. Establishing a special ritual for these days, like lighting a candle, visiting a favorite spot, or donating to a shelter, can help you honor their memory and keep them close to your heart. Everyone grieves differently, and there's no right or wrong way to mourn the loss of a beloved pet. The most important thing is to find what brings you comfort and to remember that it's okay to take your time to heal. While all animals should be treated with respect and love, thank you for joining me in this episode, showing love specifically to our canine counterparts. As we come to the close of this episode, I hope we've captured the essence of why dogs are so special. Their loyalty, love, and unwavering presence are gifts we are so lucky to receive. From the first time they wag their tail when we walk through the door, to the quiet moments of comfort when we need them most. Dogs remind us of what it means to love unconditionally, to live in the moment, and to appreciate the simple joys in life. Even though our time with them may feel far too short, the impact they leave on our hearts lasts a lifetime. It's in the way they make us smile, the way they heal us without words, and the way they teach us how to love fully. And when the time comes to say goodbye, it's okay to grieve deeply, because that grief is a reflection of how deeply they were loved. So tonight, as you hug your dog, or remember a beloved one who's crossed the rainbow bridge, take a moment to reflect on all the ways they've shaped your life. They give us their all in the short time they're with us, and in return, we carry them with us forever. Thank you for tuning in to Curious Minds Infinite Answers. If this episode resonated with you, please share it with a fellow dog lover. And let's celebrate the wonderful companions who have given us so much. Until next time, take care, be kind to yourself, and give your dog an extra treat for me.